morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone around the globe, across the globe. I hope you're all doing well. Um, give me a second. I hear a couple feedback. Okay, so now I know it's Father's Day this weekend. Is that correct? I may be mistaken. <laughs> I mean, different countries have it differently. Anyway, for those of you that are celebrating Father's Day, happy Father's Day. If you're watching this live, please do um, click down below on uh, and type down on the comments on hashtag live. Otherwise, if you're on replay, um, type down hashtag replay. So today we have Celia with me um, and we're going to be talking in regards to colored strings. Now, the first time, so welcome, Celia. Hello, let's welcome Celia. <laughs> so welcome, Celia. Now, Hi. Um, the first time I came across Color String was when I was in a conference in uh, Cremona many, many years ago um, before the pandemic for a string conference. And that was when I came across um, Colored Strings and it looked really fascinating in regards to what it is all about. So. Today, we have Celia to kind of explain and show us what it's all about and how fun it is. Because um, I saw a lot of recordings that um, Marit, one of the ladies uh, with colored strings um, that was showing me, and it looks really fascinating with, um, what's the guy's name again? That's with a G. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. The, the author. <laughs> the author. Oh, oh my heaps. God, this is the embarrassing. <laughs> That's a pretty important name to come out very early in a, a color, in a conversation about color strings is the author of the method, Geza Silve and his brother Chaba, two Hungarian brothers, brilliant brothers. Yes. Yes. I can never remember his name is because of the the Geza, right? <laughs> I'm sure yeah. I, I'm not saying it with a Hungarian accent, but but the Finns say Geza. Yeah. Uh, okay, Geza. So. Um, I may be pronouncing it incorrectly, but there you go. I'll, I'll write down all the names and all of that. So at the end of the session, you are more than welcome to reach out to Celia or look it up in regards to what the color string is all about. So Celia, yeah. tell us what color string is all about. Well, color strings is one of the most dynamic and brilliant ways to teach strings to young people. Um, it's an inter I, I, I'm going to tell you how it first evolved because it's it's quite quite interesting and related to the books as they are today. Um, so, uh, Geza Silve is a Hungarian violinist and uh, and teacher, and he got a position in 1971 with the East Helsinki Music Institute. Uh, and things were pretty awful in Hungary at that time, politically, and he and his brother played in a quartet and they, they accepted this position to come to Finland to uh, a much freer and more uh, wonderful country uh, at the time. And um, he thought that they would be teaching university students. And when he arrived in Helsinki, he had 68 seven-year-olds at the East Helsinki music institute and no common language uh, because of course those little kids were just starting their journey speaking English and he spoke Hungarian and German and certainly not Finnish. Um, so he had to very quickly work out how to communicate with the children and this may be a, a strong contributor to the colourful simple pictures that you'll see. Uh, I've got a couple of books here with me but but uh, you can see that the characters of the strings are the teddy bear, the father, the mother, and the little bird. And, um, and so this teaching method evolved through a, a need to communicate. And also um, when he was expecting his first child, Reka, he, uh, she was responding when he played violin um, in utero. And he thought, right, I'm going to devise a method to teach my child in the most uh, sequential and child-centered way. Um, and so I, I guess that would be, if we're looking at 10 reasons to explore this method, number one would be that it is so child-centered. Um, everything is in color. It's sequenced magnificently so that each concept is introduced one at a time. Uh, and you're always going from a position of known information to attach to the new information. Um, 
and when Geza was uh, originally writing this beginner tutor, he looked at what was available on the market and every single tutor available at the time had at least 50 pieces of new information on page one, key signature, time signature, stave, all of those things. And uh, possibly Lorraine, when you and I were learning, we just, when we asked a question of our teacher, they would have said, oh, I'll tell you about that later. Um, and I think most of us have. And, and so this is something we don't have in Colour Strings. It's, it's all about the imagination and coming from the child's world. Um, and based on uh, the Kodai method of singing. So uh, they're singing before they're playing. However, the reading is introduced from the first day. Yeah. So, so that's really fascinating in regards to that history. Um, from my understanding, like growing up learning in a traditional way, like my mom's a musician. So, you know, learning was like, here's the book, here's the instrument, you can learn it yourself for <laughs> myself anyway. <laughs> but um, from my understanding from many years of teaching and many years of observing, I think I can safely say that the general, the general way of teaching is more of having students understand number one, their alphabets and number two, their numbers, the sequence of the alphabets and the numbers before they can start learning the learning music or learning instrument. I'm assuming that color strings is a little bit different where that's not a absolute requirement, should I uh, say? Well, it's, it's very much uh, from a singing perspective and that it all starts in the home. So uh, if there's a, a family and they, they already, when they have a toddler, they're, they're already thinking about a musical future of some sort. They want to introduce their child to some kind of instrument. Uh, they'll start with music kindergarten. And certainly in uh, Europe, it's very much part of music education. And, and I know we have here in Australia also different types of music kindergartens. So there are little songbooks, the singing rascals here. So you have pentatonic songs and uh, la and do and they introduce uh, with the same sequencing that Kodai suggested so so me and la so me la so me do la so me re do and then uh, and then we have these beautiful recordings of professional orchestras alongside children singing so uh, the the object is to sort of create this wonderful warm musical atmosphere in the home uh, the child sitting on the mother's lap and uh, and they're singing to them it, it, the, the books are written in C major so with the idea that many parents have learnt piano <laughs> and they can read them but of course when we pick up the instrument we're starting on the on the D on different D, yeah. yeah 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 that's right yeah. um so yes, it, it's very carefully done that with recordings which are fairy tales uh, where, for example, there's a little elf who can't sing and he goes to music land and, um, and then we hear the orchestra playing with these two notes and he practices those notes. So, so there's a sort of immersion of sound so that by the time they start their instrument, They've got a, a repertoire of songs in their head, and they uh, and they've already experienced uh, beautiful harmonies, not just chord one, four, five, but but these rich, magnificent harmonies with olives in them and capers, and not just you know vanilla ice cream with chocolate topping. <laughs> true, true. I love that. Yeah, like like so. Just now before we just popped on i had a um a deaf student um who completely has no ears she's, she's completely on hearing aids mm -hmm. and we had to record our exam um our violin exam and the thing is i try not to control her too much and sometimes i tend to go back into that control of the traditional way of this is how everyone should be behaving kind of thing mm. and i could sense that she was kind of nervous um and this this happens in a lesson like sometimes she her thought process is a little bit different and it's yes. funny how you you were mentioning about um the singing part because the singing part is actually really important mm. and i think a lot of string players tend to omit that 
part because right. I, I find a, a lot of string players refusing to sing. It's like, mm. hang on, you know, we're all musicians. We should yeah. be able to sing anyway. That's so right. I, when she does play, she tends to play and sing. Oh, that's lovely. And I just let her do it. Mm. You know, yeah. um, that and means the that she's actually... vibrations are important too, aren't they? Absolutely. And yeah. that means she's actually concentrating because she's actually hearing it in her head. It's just mm. that because she's hearing it so much in her head, she's actually vocalizing the, the tune and playing it at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. with color strings, the, uh, the intonation, if you uh, look at color strings trained, trained children, they have a very fine pitch discrimination uh, because they do a lot of improvising and transposing. So when they learn, well, we start off with left hand pizzicato all over the instrument. So unlike me, I felt like I was moving to another country when I went to third position. <laughs> Maybe even okay. just moving town when I finally got to put my fourth finger on. Wow. You know. <laughs> um, but but third position was, yes, it was moving overseas in, in my uh, learning experience. But, but color strings beginners are plucking all over the instrument and, of course, then establishing a relaxed posture and, um, and uh, feeling like they're very comfortable on the instrument. They're using all fingers for pizzicato and color strings was the first to use left hand harmonics and left hand pizzicato um, in a, a tutor method. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now yeah. We're, we're just going to take a step back because yeah. you are currently in Queensland and you're Australian. Yes. How did you come across the colored string and learning um, closely with Giza? Giza. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I was a, an exchange student after I finished high school because uh, I was born in North Queensland in the tropics and I'd never seen snow and uh, I, I won a scholarship to go somewhere and I chose Finland because I knew that's where Santa came from <laughs> and there was snow and uh, so I went to a little town 25 kilometers from the Russian border called Kuchmo. Hello, anybody in Kuchmo? <laughs> and many greetings, Teresia. Um, and so I lived there for a year and my first host mother only spoke two words of English. She could say bye-bye and beer. Uh, so I had to learn- Beer English. as in beer? <laughs> like have a beer, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I had to learn Finnish very quickly and uh, as a musician I had lessons there and people mentioned uh, Geza's work and the fact that he had a television series in the 70s called Mini Fiddlers in Music Land and it was to bring music to the children all over Finland and, and Sweden and it was you know, preschool music ideas and violin. And interestingly, it took off all over the country, not just the children, the mummies, the daddies, the grandmas, the grandpas, they all wanted to do it. All the violins sold out in the whole country. So they had to import from uh, Sweden and Norway to, to get enough instruments. Um, so anyway, I went back later uh, and studied with him for a few months and um, worked in the school later on. I've been back many times, worked alongside him at East Helsinki and um, also in Kuhmo, I did a, a maternity leave position. So uh, yes, it's it certainly shaped uh, my life. This, this wonderful method has, has given me, uh, uh, I guess the opportunity to to teach music from a very holistic way. Yeah. So instead of meeting Santa, you met Giza. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. And yes, he's somebody I deeply admire. Having taught the method for more than 30 years, I still think it's absolute genius. I mean, all the foundations that you need to be a professional musician are laid early on in the early lessons. Everything you need to be able to do is laid down early. Uh, and because it's oral based, uh, the we can demand of our students that they 
play exactly in tune. You know, they can sing the me and play the me. And, and is that where me lives? Is, is that, can you sing me, fa, me, fa, getting the interval exactly a semitone? Um, those sorts of things. And, and chamber music from the beginning. So it's designed to be taught as private lessons alongside a group lesson, um, which is what I've done in the last, I suppose, 20 years. Uh, and it means that you can't teach as many individual students, but when the students are coming three times a week, so uh, for a private lesson and then a small group, and then for the orchestra, uh, then you can work lots of things in that small group and the motivation is so great because you're part of a little team. And, you know, they might look at the next one and say, oh, that's a very nice vibrato, um, what, what he's having or something. Yeah. Yeah, no, like like just looking at those videos uh, when I was at the conference, it's it's very oriented, it's very child friendly. It's very, yeah. it's very, it's very easy for the kids to kind of enjoy in a sense. It's one of yeah. those few methods where, um, you know, the kids can grasp very quickly because yeah. it's, it's it's such a nice method that it's mm. it's put together. Um, should is there a recommendation in regards to the age or any age? Uh, well, um, you could you could take children, I guess, four to eight years old. Um, probably, I mean, girls and boys are so different developmentally <laughs> with their fine motor, and and every child is so different, aren't they? And it depends on so many things because uh, we need the parent in the lesson at the start for support, support. Uh, and and um, you know the bow is guided from the beginning so the child is not actually bowing alone although I have actually found myself that uh, I trust the child and I'll either not give them the bow to take home for a few weeks uh, because very few relationships with mum where the child will tolerate mum and mum's usually pretty bad at bow guiding <laughs> i mean i train the mums and dads but but uh they need to be able to support the the thumb shape and and all of this stuff without being too bossy and they tend to just grab the child you know so yeah. all of those things have to be done very subtly um and they seem to accept me doing it much more but it's probably because i'm not blood <laughs> <laughs> fair enough yeah. no um i i tell the kids my kids i'm like maybe you should be teaching mom and dad instead you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but no that that whole idea of taking that bow away is actually uh, a good idea yeah. like i've been yeah. contemplating about that yes um it's it's sometimes parents tend to want to move ahead quicker yes, than do. they should they do and they need uh, a big which, talking to <laughs> yeah and that yeah. ends up actually causing more problems than helping. Yeah. And um, I think they don't realize that our first memories of something, our muscle memory, you know, every time you take a new beginner, you have to remember, oh, that's right. This is what it feels like on your first day, you know, whereas it's the 50 millionth time for us. But uh, that muscle memory, the first time they take the bow is going to be the strongest. Just like the first time they see their teacher, they think, all right, she's a bit weird, she's a bit old, you know, she's she's got glasses or whatever. The second time they're not going to take all that much in. So I'm very mindful of how those first experiences happen. Um, you know, with the, we do all sorts of relaxed tree things and, and how the violin's placed. But, but one of the other great things about using this method is it's very flexible because every teacher does things their own way. You know, they like to teach vibrato their own way and um, and you can adapt uh, the method to suit your own nation and your own culture. So right throughout the books, there are pages where you have to compose your own songs. Um, you know, you'll have an example given and then you have to do your own thing. I can just find one for you. So we start off and we're just oh, drawing right. in the notes here. And then on the next page, the teacher writes something, a little song that comes from the child's world. I usually try and personalize it for them. And then here they're doing their own thing. So they're practicing the theoretical sides of things using only the new concepts that we've been teaching. It might be um, here, it's using do, re, mi, 
with the rhythms learnt so far, ta, titi, za and ta, a. So they're, they're doing those things. And, and it's great because their compositions come up with, you know, first octave harmonic, second octave, left hand pizzicato, fermata, uh, all the expressive things that we've already done on open strings. So when we get to the Mozart sonata, you don't suddenly have to teach them how to play musically. You know, that first plucking has to be ringing and, oh, you know, this is the magic moment. So we're training from the beginning with all this imaginative material. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So in the beginning, they learned, it includes kind of like oral skills because you're singing. Very much so, yeah. Plus the composition, what you just said mm. with the experimenting and mm. kind of broadening what they've learned and using their knowledge to what they learn. And mm. then with the feel, being comfortable with the space because That's we're it. always telling them, right, it has, it's got to be here and it mm. has to only stay to here. So it's more mm. of the color string is more of getting comfortable with that space. So it's like the bowing, you're getting comfortable with using that amount of bow and mm. using the amount of space right. that you have within yourself. That's right. And so when you learn first finger and you're playing open to first finger do re do once you can do that you're then moving into other positions all over and you're playing do re do uh, and you'll use different fingers as well so it's not just first finger it's the the do re interval that you're learning and you'll do it in half position on flats and uh, the uh, the scale books are all done orally so that uh, when you're teaching the scale they have something like this to look at. Can you see? Yeah. So they they know this note. They know it's first finger on the bare string. And they sing each one. Do, play do, re, mi. So you're not saying, oh, raise your C sharp a little bit and, and, and make sure, you know, you're not giving them all that boring stuff. You're just singing and they're, they're working that ear the whole time. And I think it's absolute genius. Clearly, I'm still excited about it. Um, and then they can do it right on the top of the fingerboard and they don't even know. You know, sometimes I just have to say, well, I didn't do that till university, you know, and they just think, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you guys, because you use the, it's kind of in related to the Kodai method with the singing and the doors and so. stuff. Yeah. Now, do you guys use the movable doors or you just yes. stick with those? And oh, okay. No, no, very happy. And uh, for those people in Italy and Spain and other fixed dough uh, countries, I take my hat off to you. <laughs> and we did do a color strings course in Madrid and uh, the teachers tried, they, they were so in love with this that they uh, were trying to overcome. Uh, but of course, in, in Spain, do is C and C is C, you know. Uh, but for us, Do can be anywhere. And Geza would say, Do is a traveler. He's a wanderer, and he can be anywhere on the any finger. Um, so it, it's very helpful for all sorts of things: lightness of hand, uh, intonation, and also just realizing that everything gets a bit smaller when you go up this end. Mm. Your ear shows you and you don't have to be overtly taught all these things. But, you know, for me, teaching melodic minor scales to uh, second grade exam, um, because I, I work with this alongside the Australian system because I think, well, the kids live in Australia and uh, they can get the technical advantages of colour strings, but they, they want to be like their mates. And anyway, uh, teaching melodic minor. So instead of saying, uh, raise the sixth and seventh and lower and <laughs> yeah. the, the, you forgot your flat. So we're just singing la, ti, do, re, mi, fi, si, la, so, fa, mi. So the, the far and so become fi and si. Okay, and so those of you that don't know what a movable dough is, because there's a couple of people are like, what the heck's going on? What's she right. talking about? <laughs> this is all another language. All right, so do from the beginning, we know do as C. And that's why we've always learned do is C, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And we always start with the C. The movable do, movable do means that you can move the do instead of always starting on the C, you can have the do moved up to the F or the G, depending on that scale. Um, and that's where or you anywhere. start. Yeah, anywhere, anywhere on whatever note, whether or not yeah. it's a sharp or yeah. a flat. 
Yeah. Um, so that's what is a movable dome. Now, I, I heard you said the fist and the disc and all these things that's yeah. used as well. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so so uh, when you raise the note, it, it has an E sound. So far becomes yeah. fee, so becomes C. Uh, and then you can play in any key, any key at all. And then yeah, later so when it's made conscious, uh, they think, oh, that's just that old thing on that spot. Yeah. So when I learned the fist and the desk, thing in uni i was like what the heck is this you know? mm, yeah what well, first we learned the do re mi and suddenly there's the is s and whatever so the if you're going higher is is yes is that correct so this means it's this this do re mi miss uh well me and me and far are already a semitone so do di re ri mi oh, okay. fa <clears throat> i can't see Fi so si la li ti do. Okay, and then if you're going flat, it's S from S. memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't volunteer to sing it descending, <laughs> <laughs> but it is so. That's got to be one of the things that really makes my life much easier. So you know, you might be playing, I don't know, some concerto, Haydn violin concerto, or something, and it's a little passage that's not in tune and, and you can say, oh, remember that little song? Remember that song? He's my dog, he's dashing Dan. Do, re, do, re, re, do, do. Can you please play dashing Dan between third and fourth finger? And they'll play dashing Dan or whatever the intervals are that are in that passage in the concerto. And you can clean up, you can do housework on passages related to material that they've learnt early on and they can then go, aha, yes, it was out of tune. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it stays now, this is, a long time. Yeah. So this is the biggest question. What about kids that are colored blind? Ah, yeah. <laughs> I have had a couple. I have had a couple. And in the group lesson, they're the one on the wrong string. <laughs> uh, but it's not really a problem. Uh, I tend to go to the traditional names earlier, but because the books are always in the right order, the E strings always on top, we start with a one line system and then we get to two lines and uh, it, it's the uh, regularity of um, the display is so even that it's not really a problem at all. Um, and the concepts are perfectly adaptable, whether you know what the colour is. And I, I quickly have said, oh, it's on this string or that string, if they're on the wrong one, but it's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Much cool. more difficult no. to teach a student who's deaf, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it is. No, like for myself, I, I mix match everything um, because I, I think all methods has its strong points. That's right. Um, yeah. So cool. like I, 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 I write theory books and I've got 23 theory books out there. And Amazing. I incorporate from the beginning, you do, you understand patterns. So it's the finger patterns like the Suzuki method does. And then on the same time, you do the traditional way, the way with the alphabet as well. So then it gives the kids the chance of deciding which method they want to use, whether or not they want to use the finger method or the letter method. Mm -hmm. And moving on, yes, it also includes a bit of composition because I believe that that's really interesting in, mm -hmm. in, in, in encouraging um creativity so mm -hmm. you know there's composition in the first book right. with open strings as well mm -hmm. not like yours with the harmonics and things mm -hmm. as yet mm -hmm. um but yeah i i believe that you know you give them that variation of um knowledge and then it because every student learns differently and every teacher teaches differently exactly then and they the, can kind of paint yeah and any method is really only as effective as the teaching um isn't yeah. it so uh, yeah, I, I agree. I know I'm completely eclectic, but um, I can't go past the sequencing of this this method. I mean, if you look at the yellow pages, uh, these books have everything that you need. For example, basic rhythms in the yellow pages. Uh, <laughs> I love any... that the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it's like these three books are like an encyclopedia. So just say you've got a, a, a student who's having trouble with a certain rhythm. Uh, let's find one here. So triplets, for example, and they're not playing their triplets properly. 
Clearly, I hadn't opened the triplet page for a while. <laughs> yeah. So they're doing, they're starting off with triplets and they're plucking with the left hand, left hand. the beat. And then uh, this same theme goes through for all the different rhythms taught. You use the same theme and then they play that in the triplets. And then after you've basically worked out what the triplet is, you then get etude in triplets, you get a folk song in triplets, you get uh, a, an excerpt from the lit literature in, with triplets. Um, so this is the reading concerto and uh, other pieces that use triplets. Um, and this is one of my personal favourites. It's Mozart's Mirror Canon. Do you know about the Mirror Canon? It's a, it's a fabulous one for the kids because one, one child can play it this way and another child plays it this way and it works. Wasn't he a genius? Why did he die wow. so young? <laughs> so yeah, for them that's wow. a revelation. The only thing that's a bit disturbing is the notes look slightly funny uh upside down obviously but but they read them straight off and uh, so i actually every... do that with my students like yeah. I, I get them to read backwards yeah because some sometimes they memorize the pieces i'm like nope let's read it backwards <laughs> yeah it's always shows if you know it if you can do it backwards but the <laughs> same the same with this uh every bowing any bowing so there's a chapter on a martile potato strict spiccato, soft spiccato, smiling, smiling uh, bows and a sautier, ricochet, all of them have that same structure of the, that same theme, work out what the uh, bowing is, then we do it uh, as an etude, folk song, duo, concert piece, excerpts, so that it's just hammered in all the different areas that they might encounter it. And I can't replace that. You know, I'd have to spend the rest of my life collecting the material and Gez has done it all for us. No, that's good. That's all in the yellow pages. Yes. Yellow pages, three volumes of sheer genius, everything that you ever need in life. Yeah. I mean, we, we have a lot of books and then it's always just the few exercises and that's it. Um, yes. Like that looks like it's a, a combination of different um you know instead of just triplets oh, triplets and that's it it's a combination yeah. of different notes and, and oh like that. everything and i don't actually understand i think i mean he is an incredibly special and genius person but why he would spend so many years of his life collecting material from every country so there's you know folk music from every nation and repertoire he's he's spent years collecting all of this and then putting it into chapters for us. So, for example, that triplet chapter, uh, and it would take me so long just to get those things together. But yeah, a lot of research has been done. And I think it's just um, the generosity to give to the children, the next generations of children that it's there. And he had to see it finished before he uh, went to chase butterflies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's he's brilliant. I really love yeah, that. Now, is. for those that are interested in getting those books, is it available to yes. get? <laughs> yes, um, you can contact uh, Colour Strings Australia is the uh, Australian distributor of music, Yuri Duchenko. Um, I think there have been a couple of website issues there, but you can ask Yuri to send the music to you. And also you can go direct to the publisher Fenica Gammon, oh, that's F E W -N, N I C A, Gammon, G E H R M A W -N, N, uh, and they also send music directly to you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what I want, maybe you can give me that list of the, the names. You said three volumes. Uh, yes. I said three books, yeah. Later on, you can give it to me later and then okay. I can just put it on the post so that it's sure. easier for people to na yeah. navigate around. I mean, but there's I think a lot more brilliant. material. There's, there's oh. you know, sonatas, <laughs> sonatas and solo work. And it's, there's, yeah, everything you need. If, and I, by the way, I'm not sponsored by anyone. They don't pay me to say this. It's just how I feel. Yeah, no, not <laughs> you know at all. I mean, I mean I'm not we, selling books. Yeah. <laughs> 
think we've become a, we've become across you know a good method or a good technique. It's it's nice to share. It's really exciting, you know. Yeah. So that's why every month I get different methods coming in. It's it's like sharing like what I find out there, and it's a possibility of people kind of um getting into it. Like I said just now, it's I come from a small town, and um you know coming out of Malaysia, it's like wow, you know there's methods in Finland and Hungary yeah. and Australia, well, on, and it's <laughs> good on you, Lorraine. You're in a way, you're doing what Gez is doing. You're sharing all of this generously. I mean, you could be doing your washing on a Sunday morning. Um, you know, that's maybe incredible. not washing, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, walking the dog or something. So yeah, it, it's a wonderful thing to. And I agree. I think to be eclectic um, and just take the good parts from uh, different methods. And every time we all go to a PD session, the conference. You know, you think, oh, I haven't, I haven't used that for years. Must dig that one out again. Um, absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah so, great. like yourself, I'm not being paid. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. But we love what no, we do. It's, that's that's right. No, it's exciting. Like you know, just hearing about it, and then it's like finding new ideas, and it's like, wow, you know, I never knew that. You know, um, this was, existed, and then hmm. the thing is, every every one of us teachers have different characters, and we're all different. So it's taking whatever method yeah. out there and kind of using it to match your character. If one That's method right, works exactly. for you, yeah. If one method mainly works for you, you can you know have that method as your main method to use, and then just evolve by um, you know mix and matching other yeah. methods or your own style in teaching. That's itself. right, and that that makes me. Uh just think Lorraine that you know somebody looking at these books might just um, look at them and think well that's pretty easy stuff I mean they're just they're just sort of simple where black notes here the progression goes from the colors to black notes gradually but but whilst they look simple every page is loaded with about 10 different tasks that we have to consider. So the training to teach this method successfully is really important. You really need to know what you're doing. You need a little touch of the Kodai singing, which doesn't take very long. You don't have, I mean, you know, once you've seen the sound of music and sung with, with Julie <laughs> Andrews, that's a really good start. Um, you don't have to have level 12 in the Kodai certification. Um, you don't have to have a, diploma and singing no no well goodness me people have died hearing me sing um but i still do it um but but the training is really important and uh and so we do run courses um there's probably going to be one at the end of january sometime but but i'll give you my email and if people have queries uh, also to contact oz color strings because they're uh helen uh, and I do courses around Australia for teachers who want to oh. um, have a basic program and, and just feel confident no, that's, to do it. Yeah. yeah, no, that's brilliant. That's brilliant because um, I think Moritz re reached me the other day and um, I, I I am kind of person that likes to learn and it's, it's Obviously. for me, it's, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, who knew? Um, <laughs> no, it's exciting. Like I, I love to see, you know, um, other people's, and like efforts in regards to what they've created and what they're sharing, because it, you can just see that amount of energy and the yeah. amount of love in regards to their techniques and stuff like that. So yeah. I've always wanted to go through a Giza's, one of Giza's uh, workshops, but I've, I've never had time as I'm busy mm. with my string stastic stuff. Yeah. Um, so they do have online courses as well. Mm. It's just that the time zone is like two in the morning, three in the morning. So yeah. it, <laughs> it's not the best, yeah. although it's easier um, to to go to courses you know overseas but it's just that time zone is difficult so for you to offer that uh, within australia time that's um helpful with the people in this time zone yes well we have we have run the australian color strings conference in toowoomba and geza and chaba have been uh, a, a few times and run these five-day courses and we've since had the um uh the chair of the color strings board yvonne fry who was recently at the yes, Oster conference. I met her. Yeah, so she's also been in Toowoomba um, at running courses uh, with me to help people uh, get those basics and to get the confidence to use this wonderful material alongside their own material, but um, to help them. Yeah, so, uh, 
So I think that's very important because I know as a young teacher, if I hadn't been lucky enough to go and study with Geza before I knew anything at all, I would have thought, oh, I can just buy the book and start teaching it. But you just don't, you, you can't. I mean, there's a wonderful uh, teacher's handbook uh, that goes with the books and it explains what each page means. But I think nothing beats doing a course and practicing no, guiding the bow and and how how is that how is that working and what, what should the sound be like how do i encourage and all those little things that teachers chat about when they get in the same room yeah so like it's it is possible to do it for whatever you want to learn it is possible to, to self-taught but it it is very helpful if you could be guided by someone that is experienced yeah. in this yeah. this field and it would help a lot and quicker um, yes, you know, your development with everything will be a yeah. lot quicker. Yeah, and maybe you can learn from their mistakes. <laughs> true, true, absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. You know, it's brilliant. And then the thing is, when you join these courses, you get to network and see other people that may, you know, be on the same boat or maybe more yeah. advanced or been where you're at. Yeah, so, that's right. That's and definitely... when you see the kids play, you know, we're demonstrating kids play with freedom and uh, and a, a sort of musical sophistication and integrity you realize how often we underestimate what kids can do and we dumb down way too much and and they have you know when you do improvising in a group lesson and they they have to play a musical question to another child you realize what wonderful ideas they have of their own and if they're given the tools to play in a free way and make a good sound then you know that they're off on their own then which is a absolutely. wonderful thing to facilitate yeah yeah absolutely okay so guys if you are interested in the colored strings there are online courses doesn't matter which part of the world you're at um the main headquarters in helsinki is that right is that where they're right based? yes they do have a lot of online courses that they've offered because maritz have been sending me quite a few <laughs> It's just I couldn't make it because of the time zone. Um, if not, I, I won't be sleeping at all. Um, so if you're in that part of the world, you're more than welcome to do it. Unless you're taking a week off work just to go for that one, you know, you're more than welcome to do it. Otherwise, Celia does have um, courses, as you mentioned just now, um, in this time zone, in Australia time zone, which may be more friendly compared to the European time zone. That's right. So, and you can ask yeah. questions, yeah. Yeah, so if anyone is interested, you know, you can just Google color strings. I'm sure there's a lot of um, um, offices globally in regards to the color yeah. strings. Just yes. reach out to, yes. yeah, your local people person. And um, yeah. I'll leave Celia's contact details uh, at the end of the session. And then I'll I'll put in the name of the books that you mentioned, the yellow pages. I love mm -hmm. that name. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a really good resource to have, actually. Yes, uh, yes, this one is the second one ever. The first one was written by Leopold Mozart. He wrote a treatise of everything, all the ornaments, all the rhythms like this, and Geza's number two. He doesn't brag, though. I do. <laughs> you brag on his behalf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he'll be, he would be making a dartboard of my face if he were watching. <laughs> like, stop! <laughs> No, yeah. that's brilliant. That's great. Well, thank you, Celia, for coming on and sharing and all that. 